Hey guys, Level Cap here. Today is Monday, which means it's time for an episode of Loadout, the series where you guys, the viewers, get to pick a gun and customization for me to use. The way you do this is you leave a comment down below letting me know what kind of weapon and accessories you'd like me to run with, and I will pick one of the top rated comments for the next episode of Loadout. Today's top comment comes from Klunhoff, who says the Rainbow Six Siege Buck Loadout. M16A4 with a hollow sight, underslung rail, laser sight compensator, M1911, and nothing on it. Gadget 1 will be the M26 mask with buckshot. Field upgrade will be grenadier for the extra flashbangs and buckshot rounds for your M26. This is a loadout trying to replicate the new Canadian operator buck coming in Rainbow Six Siege in February. I hope you pick this one and have fun level cap. The only slight inaccuracy with this replication is that we're using the M16 where buck I believe has an M4 instead but for the most part the two weapons are going to perform similarly enough and look close enough that it shouldn't really make a difference anyway. We are replicating this in Battlefield 4 after all, so the benefits and stuff that you'll get from Rainbow Six Siege certainly aren't really going to translate across into this game since they are so different. Probably the main difference between games is that the M16A4 and M4 in this game only offer you a burst fire mode instead of a full auto mode, and the one in Rainbow Six Siege, as far as I know, is going to be a fully automatic weapon. And having the combination of both shotgun and a Assault rifle is quite good, especially since the M16A4 is best when used at range, and the shotgun obviously is a close quarter weapon. It'll be interesting to see how it actually fares in Rainbow Six Siege, since most of the engagements in that game are sort of medium to close-ish range. I don't know how much switching to shotgun will really be uh, as much of a benefit, since fully automatic weapons in close quarters are incredibly good, since a one-shot headshot will kill you no matter what. There isn't a lot of reason to use a shotgun if you're pretty good at aiming for the head. That being said, I'm still quite excited to use Buck the Operator just because he does have that option to switch between the two weapons. He doesn't have any cool gadgets or whatever, but he can adapt combatively to pretty much any sort of engagement distance. Now in Battlefield 4, being used to use a burst fire weapon is not my ideal way of playing the game. I've said this many a times before, but I'm just not a big fan of burst fire weapons in this game. Um, they don't really replicate the benefits that you would experience from them in real life and I just find them to be mostly annoying or uh, prevent me from winning firefights that I feel like I would win with a fully automatic weapon. There are benefits to them, I'm just not as crazy about them as other people might be. Now flashbangs can be somewhat useful, especially if you're playing game modes that really rely a lot on choke points. Pretty much Rush is the one game mode in Battlefield that uh, gets a lot of the combat down to choke points and having a number of flashbangs can be very helpful in those situations. I don't know if I'd prefer them over grenades, it really depends on the situation, especially when so many people are relying on explosive spam already. A flashbang can kind of throw a wrench in the mix and uh, overpower some of the defenses that were ready for lots of explosive spam. As for a general TDM loadout, it's not a bad loadout. The flashbangs are not that useful and the standard M16A4 is definitely geared more towards long range combat. I don't like using burst fire weapons in close quarters just because having to constantly spam burst fire means that you're probably going to be missing a lot of your rounds. I find it easier to track with a full auto weapon than I do a burst weapon. At distances though with stationary targets or targets that aren't moving around that quickly burst fire is uh, actually quite easy to use and I find burst fire weapons actually very easy to use on console if especially if you don't have good recoil control just using the burst fire allows you to put a lot of your rounds on target at those further ranges. And for the most part the weapons set up pretty nicely. I actually like the holographic sight in this game quite a bit even though it's not my preferred sight overall I find it highly usable it's I'd say it's in my top three red dot sights in the game. Um, the only change that I would make is that having an underbarrel shotgun really isn't that useful. If you really want something for close quarters, you could always grab a G18 or something like that for dealing with people up close and personal, and then uh, run with like an angled grip or something like that. Or switch to the uh, detached M26, and that would also work as a close range shotgun. That being said, I didn't feel like anything on this current loadout was fighting me. Sometimes you'll make gun setups where the recoil is just way too in intense or 
you know you can make it much more manageable and much more effective. There was nothing going on while playing with this loadout that I was like, man, I could be doing so much better if I only had this attachment. I think it could be slightly easier to use this weapon with like maybe an angle grip or something like that, but ultimately it was still very usable, even though it's a burst fire weapon. Maybe one day we'll get our full auto M16 and M4 back in the Battlefield franchise. It has been one of my gripes about the games. I mean, it's not a big one. Obviously, we have so many guns in the game, but just having that aesthetic M4, M16 and firing in full auto would be great because they are two of the most iconic weapons in the US military and frankly, a lot of other militaries around the world. Now, when running around in TDM servers, I ultimately didn't feel like this was the best TDM loadout out there. Sure, the shotgun can be good, but um, it's very situational for the most part. The M4 is decent at long range, but I really feel the, like having one strong primary weapon with full auto, like an Ace 23 or an M416 that can really handle both situations without having to preemptively switch your gun from either shotgun to assault rifle is going to be a little bit more effective in the long run because you can't always anticipate what situation you need. And so if you're not set up for it with this weapon, then you're going to be in a weird situation. Whereas uh, if you pick a simpler setup with like an Ace-23, M416, AEK, you always know what kind of primary weapon you have and what you're capable of. Anyway, I have to say I do enjoy this loadout. I think it's going to be a bit more successful in Rainbow Six Siege just because that game has a lot more premeditated combat where you can anticipate what kind of engagement distance you're going to see people at so you know whether or not to have your shotgun or assault rifle ready to go. That wraps it up for this episode of Loadout. Don't forget to leave your comments down below letting me know what kind of weapon and accessories you'd like me to run with for next week's episode. And as always, I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap, signing off.